Hello, uh, my name is Oleg Shilovitsky. I am co-founder and CEO of OpenBOM. OpenBOM is a cloud-based uh, software uh, we develop for engineers, manufacturing and contractors to manage bill of materials. And together with me today, uh, Jackson King, uh, who we have uh, been working together um, and uh, helping Jackson to manage bill of materials and work together with bombs in Onshape. So, hello, Jackson. Hi, Oleg. How's it going today? I'm doing pretty well. Thank you. So, thank you for joining us today. So, uh, can you please introduce and tell a little bit to our listeners about what are you doing in business and uh, what uh, software are you using for design and bill of materials management? Well, I uh, have a company that is a Rockridge design company, and I specialize, specialize in producing uh, custom drawings and prototypes for small to medium-sized businesses. My uh, primary CAD system is uh, Onshape. I moved to that about a year and a half ago, and for the last year or so, or close to it, we've been using OpenBOM to uh, document our bill of materials. Thank you, Jackson. Um, so let me introduce uh, the first topic of our conversation. And to be very honest, we've heard many times from engineers, from engineers and designers, that they are interested how to design things, and not necessarily how to create bill of materials. So bill of materials are kind of boring. So can you share your experience and how you work with Onshape and OpenBOM and how you create bill of materials? and share some practice and maybe show some examples how you do it. Sure. Uh, a couple, well, the way that I uh, usually do handle the bill of materials is that I create a, an assembly structure that follows how the build process of the design is. So for each sub-assembly, I have a bill of materials with it, and I use uh, uh, open bombs integration into Onshape to allow me to put in the individual sub-assemblies into the drawings in Onshape. And that way they are linked, so you know, updates in. The open bomb, you know, that reflects changes in the Onshape model. And then the open bomb changes are reflected in the Onshape drawing. So everything stays up to date. So would you mind to show some examples of your work and share it with our uh listeners and viewers? Sure, I can show a few examples. You see the screen okay? Uh, yeah, we can see it perfectly well. Good. Just trying to avoid Murphy's Law. <laughs> uh, let's see. So Oleg, you wanted me to share with you what I, uh, sure. one of the things I've done. and. What this is, it's a uh, sandblasting machine for a customer of mine. They use it uh, in auto repair places for doing brake repair, where it allows you to sandblast the wheel hub on the car and without uh, having to use, take any parts off. So with this one, I have it broken down into uh, several sub-assemblies, as you can see on the left side of the screen, and also the parts that come into the top level. You know, such as all the fasteners for, you know, for the glove flange, just for the blasting gloves to go in. Mm -hmm. And a lot of other purchase parts as well, with, you know, the strain reliefs where hoses and cables go in, and air fitting for a air quick disconnect hooks up. And I think a good example of the open bomb use with the following the assembly structure would be to show you the top cabinet part just as itself is. It's a riveted together and welded a little bit, so it's still a weld nut. And what this has is a, maybe a six or eight parts all drawn together in one uh, on shape part studio. And then it has a lot of the purchase parts in there. If you zoom in, you can see the little PEM nuts, threaded inserts. Mm -hmm. Yep. If we take a look at the bomb, you know, this is just generated right off of that assembly. 
and it starts off with, you know, is brought in. And then I, I apply a balloon number right away just so it more or less follows the part number structure or hierarchy. But I do like being able to put in balloon numbers manually and just reorder how I see fit. Like I, if I want to have assemblies, as you can see, the first top four rows are all assemblies followed by the parts. To me, that makes more sense because these are the big components I'm going to look for, followed by, you know, anything drilling down into, down to the individual rivets. And one really nice feature with Open Bomb that it, it is just very nice to use is having the thumbnail pictures come in. That really uh, makes it easier to identify what something really is instead of a part number. Because, you know, this vendor supplied part number, I don't know one from another off the top of my head. And being able to have the actual rivet show up. And it's the same color as the rivet that I used in the model. If we go back and look at the rivets in the assembly, you know, it, it is that light bluish green color. And here it is calling out how many rivets are needed. Um, yes, that's, that's, that's really cool. I like how you combine uh, visual bill of materials together with, together with design. And uh, I assume you can also uh, customize and change the columns, change the order of the columns and bring it in the way you actually like it to appear also on the screen. And also yeah. late, and also later on in the drawing, and we will talk about this separately. Right, and yeah, the drawings is really nice. But uh, one other thing I should say about having the thumbnail pictures in here is that my uh, sheet metal vendor that I outsource to, they really like having the thumbnail pictures. And this last time that I ordered from them, they actually only wanted the thumbnail pictures as well as a flat pattern dimensions and gauge thickness and material type. You know, were, they didn't really need to have a detailed drawing just to give me a quote on price. They were happy with looking at the picture and seeing how many bends there were and the general shape of it and then relying on the overall dimensions to uh, be able to give me a quote. Oh, this, is this is a really cool example. So you're saying that uh, image in a bomb is not only helping you to identify parts, but the image in the bomb is also helping to your contractor to uh, make an estimation of the cost and quickly return uh, to you with the, some assessments of the cost. Right. Uh, it's, it's, it's invaluable being able to actually see what part number you're looking at without having to flip back and forth between separate pages of one is a picture, the other is the part number. And I, I also have a client that has really embraced using the thumbnail pictures for checking in parts. And they, they use a lot of large, large size parts that are, you know, for truck bodies on medium duty and heavy duty trucks. And for them having any one of the guys be able to receive the order and check it in based visually on a thumbnail picture and identifying the form part has made it a lot simpler and you know, less errors with uh, identifying which part is which and how many there are. Okay, sounds good. Thank you for this explanation. So the next question I want to ask you, Jackson, is about how are you making changes in the bill of materials and how you integrate those two environments, uh, on shape and open bound together. I assume some information can be easy edited in, in on shape. And some of the information can be easier uh, edited and managed in open bond. So uh, we know from the experience that these two environments are usually very hard to integrate and sort of very hard to interplay between these two environments. And at open bomb, we spend a lot of effort trying to bring a naturally integrated environment. And especially with such two systems like open bomb and on shape, which are both systems running in the cloud browser environment, it was especially interesting and important for us to create a very smooth integration. So we are very interested to learn how you do it and actually if we succeed in some of our goals 
and uh, tell us a little bit how you do it and maybe show some examples. Well, sure. Uh, the, the way that I like to create the um, model descriptions and part numbers is that with Onshape, I will go through and create the parts and draw them as naturally as I can. Allow, and just let Onshape create the uh, part one, part two, their basic structure. And then what I like to do is bring the uh, open bomb into things by and you know create a bill of material of the of the part studio. And there I will go through and create part numbers and uh, descriptions. And I can show you. Okay, let's see it. So in the after I've you know created either a part studio or perhaps an assembly, I will then you know go in and you know do the create the bomb based off of either part studio or the assembly, and it will come in with the standard the name either it'll be part one or part two, or in this case as I was I went through before creating the bomb and added kind of unique names to the different parts like a common name that someone would recognize it as just talking about it. After that, I, cre I added in the part numbers, something that was based off of a, a structure, hierarchy structure that would flow well with how the parts went together, how they were created. And then I created a description, which a lot of times looks a lot like the name that I had created before. But to me, that's how it, that's how I think of the, the model. I don't think of it as a part number base. I think of it as the name base. And after I create the bill of material with open bomb, then I will do a drawing of the, the assembly. And that will have usually just an isometric view like this one shown here. And I'll bring in the uh, open bomb, a bill of material, you know, going to the bomb apps, searching for the one that I need, the cabinet subassembly. I'll bring that in and it comes in very nicely based off of what I had set up for the uh, parameters or the columns I wanted to import into the drawing. Uh, one of the things that I uh, can see is that you have more information in OpenBOM and you have uh, less information in the drawing. Can you explain how you, how you do it with OpenBOM and Onshape? Well, here with the uh, open bomb page I use their settings uh, configuration to go through and select just which ones I want what I want to display I'm really only looking for simple straightforward information to put into the drawing such as the, the balloon number to be called out in the balloon quantity part number description and revision and after I've made my changes and any other information I want to change. I'll go through and hit the update on shape properties. And then when I go over to the drawing, the reload button will be uh, highlighted yellow, saying that there's been some changes made. Would you like me to demonstrate that? Absolutely. Let's make a try. So if we just say cabinet wrapper, let's just get rid of the part of the description that says with hem nuts. We'll just put with Credit inserts. I'll click on, on update on shape properties. You get the confirmation that everything was good to go. And you'll see that it says I need to do an update. And oh, you can see that it just updated right away. Cool. I, I really like this part because with previous CAD systems, the drawings were, they were more of like a live, live uh, updating there was really no good way to have a drawing that would persist despite design changes so i really like with on shape and open bombs way of in integration it allows you to control when and only when you click the update button to have the drawing change so you're saying something interesting actually you're saying uh those two environments are independently holding the information uh but 
at the time that you want to bring this information in sync and at the time that you want uh, to control this change, this is what uh, on shape update in a drawing gives you an ability to put this information in a drawing. And at the same time, information lives uh, inside of OpenBOM all the time, and you can change it all the time as you need. Yeah, I really like that part about being able to have, you know, the designer and user of the application, you know, such as myself, being able to control when and where the updates happen. So when I open a drawing after several changes have been made, I'm not surprised to find that the drawing is, is broken and I have to spend a half an hour fixing it again. That's, that's a very interesting point. So the next topic I want to talk about is uh, how actually OpenBOM and Onshape is helping you to bring the right information to other people that you're working with. Contractors, suppliers, other designers. So uh, both OpenBOM and Onshape are cloud software, which probably also gives you a little bit more flexibility and a little bit more uh, availability of data, which is not locked to a particular desktop in the particular environment. So I would like you to bring some examples about how you can extract information from OpenBOM and how you, and tell me a little bit more about how you uh, interact uh, between the environment that you have, OpenBOM and Onshape, and your contractors and your suppliers. Uh, sure, uh, what, uh, what you said about OpenBOM being a web-based application was one of the things I really like about it, where I can go anywhere and access my information. If I go to a vendor's, uh, go on site at a vendor, and they have questions about a bomb or some information, I can just log in and all of my information is there. As far as sharing with uh, customers or you know, suppliers of mine, I really like being able to show the, uh, or be able to export Excel or to a PDF. And that makes it really easy for me to share through email. Because sometimes other people just don't want to sign up. They'd rather just be able to open the file. And it's easier that way. So let me show you what it looks like. Okay. So back I back here at the open bomb integration with Onshape, I just go to the export drop down and I either choose uh, export to Excel or export to a PDF. And if it's a PDF, you know, you can open it right within Chrome. And as you see, it brings in all the information, including the, the nice uh, thumbnail image, along with part numbers and description. This is very cool. Tell me what will happen if you click on this link to Onshape. Well, I certainly hope if I click on it that it opens. <laughs> but I'll say that nicer. I'll go back and do it again. I better make sure. I've I think I think it's I think it's already very cool. But uh, if you can explain what will yeah. happen when uh, the one that the one that has this bomb will click on this link and he has no access to Onshape. Go ahead. So after exporting to either an Excel or a PDF, and I can open it up here within Chrome, you'll see the different information that comes out of OpenBOM with a nice thumbnail image. And it also includes the link to Onshape, where if I email this to a vendor, they're able to select one of the parts and you know follow the, the link and it will open up an on shape view page since i'm logged into on shape right now it will open it as if it was my own but if i was to do it through either being logged out of chrome or an incognito window it'll come up as a view only which is which is really cool it means that a contractor a supplier who is getting your bill of materials and he has no access to Onshape, he has no Onshape account, will have a correct access to the right version of the part. So the information should not be copied and sent to him over the email. So he has a direct access 
to the uh, he has he has a direct access to the bill of materials and he has a direct access to a part which is managed by onship right and i can i'm able to choose whether or not that customer is able to make edits to the to the parts say if they wanted to put in custom uh, k factors or different tooling for their press break operations or if i wanted to allow them to only view and measure it and look at how a part is formed up i'm able to do that based on the viewing permissions and for them it's straightforward and smooth just a simple click from within the uh, pdf to follow the link yeah that's perfect so jackson i would like to thank you for your time today it was uh, really nice talking to you and thank you for sharing uh, your work and examples and your experience with our listeners and readers and uh, thank you for using open bomb and i look forward to talk to you again soon thank you very much thank you too Oleg. very nice to talk to you